SNES DRUNK! To this day, the Super Nintendo is considered to have one of, if not the best game library of any gaming console in history. I mean, anyone watching this right now could name 20 great games off the top of their heads, and you'd still be forgetting about 20 more great ones. Seriously, it's just one after another after another. But sadly, just like any other console, the SNES does have its share of awful, awful games. So for today, I thought it might be interesting to take a look at the absolute worst the Super Nintendo put out there. Games like these were the reason I never wanted to be a completionist back in my collecting days because there's simply no point in owning these games other than for the sake of owning them. I mean, what makes collecting old games such a great hobby is that these are interactive collectibles. They don't just sit on a shelf. Unless you own some of these turds because nobody and the right mind would play any of this crap. 13. Bill Lambeer's Combat Basketball. I've already done a video on this game and how it's the bane of my existence. I had the misfortune of renting this game as a kid and wasting a weekend because I thought the concept was cool. But instead, it's this indecipherable nonsense. You can't tell the players apart, the pass button just throws the ball in a general direction instead of locking onto a player, and the shooting is the, the same thing as passing. You just heave the ball in the direction you think the basket is. If this list were my own personal subjective list, this would be number one, but I'm to try and be objective here, but man, oh man, I hate this game. 12. Balls 3D. For as many one-on-one -on -one fighting games as there were in the 16-bit era, there were bound to be a few bad ones, and while this one tried something different, it's just so freaking ugly. This game is just one giant eyesore. The controls and special moves are at least doable, but the game's attempt at 3D is disorienting and feels completely unnatural. To top it off, Balls 3D might have the worst soundtrack of any 16-bit game ever. Just listen to this. What the hell is that supposed to be? Eleven. The Rocketeer. This was a pretty good movie, but the game is a dumpster fire. You start with this pseudo 3D flying stage that feels impossible to control, until you realize you're better off looking at the tiny screen at the bottom to navigate your way around. If you manage to get past that, you get another stupid flying stage. After this, your opponents get pissed and try and kill you in the hangar, so you fight them off on a gallery shooter stage. This part isn't that bad, but guess what's after this? That's right, another broken, half-baked, poorly designed flying stage. Scr Rue this game. Ten. Batman Forever. You know, the trouble with doing a video like this is that it's hard to avoid resorting to just insulting the game and coming up with creative ways to call the game a piece of shit and leaving it at that. We already have the angry video game nerd for that, and in Batman Forever's case, he already did a fine job burying this game. It tries to combine Mortal Kombat fighting mechanics with a 2D action platformer, and the controls are a complete disaster. To use the grappling hook, you press select and up? What the hell is that? This game is seriously a shitload of fuck. Nine. Pro Quarterback. Here's an example of a game where I don't even need to say anything. Just look at this. Look at this! How can graphics and a frame rate this bad get past testing? The Super Nintendo had some bad sports games. Street Hockey 95 is up there too, and of course Bill Ambeer's Combat Basketball, but Pro Quarterback is the worst of the worst. Eight. Captain Novelin. Here's a game starring a superhero who exists to teach kids about diabetes. He avoids aliens who look like junk food, like donuts, while maintaining a healthy diet to keep his blood glucose at a normal level. Okay, that's weird, but it seems noble enough, right? The problem is that this game looks and sounds bad even for an NES game, and literally all you do is jump and collect healthy food. The issue with most educational games most of the time isn't that they're educational, it's that they're just dull as dishwater, or in this case, just plain bad. Seven. Street Combat. I'm not sure you can get more 90s looking than this game. I mean, dear God, look at these guys. Yeah, this is another one-on-one -on -one fighting game, and it's as generic as it gets. It's developed by Irem, who made good games like the R-Type series, but it's clear they were just hopping on the fighting game bandwagon with this one. Street Combat looks bad, plays clumsy, I mean, you press X to jump for some reason, and you only get to play as one guy, this blonde mullet dude named Steven. And I mean, jeez, what were they thinking? This game is terrible. Six. 
Wizard of Oz, this is just a classic case of having no idea what can and can't hurt you, what you can and can't jump on, where you're supposed to go, what's supposed to be the background and what's supposed to be the foreground, and what the hell any of this has to do with the game is supposed to be about. This is your typical half-assed licensed garbage, but it's only the third worst licensed game on the Super Nintendo because there's also... Five... Bebe's Kids, another movie licensed game, this one being a beat-em-up, and I dare you to even try and play through the first level. The enemies take like two dozen hits, if you're even able to hit them with this horrendous hit detection. So they get hit, they get back up, they get hit, they get back up, and you slowly move to the next part. Where you hit an enemy, they get back up, and dear god, just kill me. But this still isn't as bad as... Four... Terminator 2 Judgment Day. It's amazing how badly this game is screwed up. It should be simple, right? Just a beat em up where you annihilate bad guys as the Terminator using all sorts of different weapons and stuff. But no, instead let's have some cryptic nonsense missions where you blow up things and get phone numbers and have the Terminator jump like this. The freaking Terminator should not jump like he's having muscle spasms in his groin. I'm in awe of how badly they screwed this game up. Three. Space Ace. Oh, it's only going to get worse. This game is an action platformer that's absolutely unplayable. The control is slow and deliberate, the enemies and projectiles are a hundred times faster than you are, and everything kills you in one hit, and when you die, you have to sit through the sequence every time before you're booted back to the beginning of the level. This is the kind of game that makes me wonder what the hell I'm doing with my life, making videos like this. Two race driving. Oh my god. This has to be the worst frame rate in any game I've ever seen. No, this isn't a Super FX chip game, but it's a perfect demonstration as to why the Super FX chip was needed for games like this. It's hard to tell if anything I'm doing on the controller is even registering in the game at all because it's so freaking slow to respond. How the hell does something like this get past testing? If Space Ace was unplayable, what does that make this? D-playable? I mean, it feels like the game is playing me rather than me playing the game. This is not the worst game on the Super Nintendo. That honor goes to... One! Earthbound. Man, this game is just the worst. I can't... Alright, I'm just kidding. The real number one is... One! Pit Fighter. Okay, the arcade version and even the Genesis versions of Pit Fighter aren't all that bad, but the Super Nintendo port is the dumpster fire to end all dumpster fires. You turn on the game, you pick a fighter, not like it matters at all who you pick, and you squirm around for about 30 seconds like a cockroach on its back. Seriously, the fighters move around like zombies being jolted by cattle prods. Pit Fighter for Super Nintendo is an irredeemable mess that I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy, and it's the worst game on the SNES. Anyway, that's all for now. Thanks for watching, and have a good rest of your day.